state two advantages of transmission of data in digital rather than analog. Nowadays, we use digital a little bit more. Lah. But why? Well, the first and top reason, well, there's a bunch of pros and cons of analog versus digital. Go check out the old video if you haven't. But uh, why digital? Because firstly, it's cheaper. So the circuit that we are building to transmit digital signal are using <laughs> our good old friend, the op amp in the old syllabus that will soon be removed, unfortunately. But uh, the circuits are more, more reliable and a bit cheaper as well. Reliable and cheaper. Because all you need to do is to transmit either a 1 or a 0. No need to transmit a whole range of voltages. Another possible uh, pro or advantage of the digital signal is that the signal, the digital signal, it's transmitted in ones and zero, right? So the digital signal, over time, if you have attenuation, so maybe the signal is supposed to look like this, after a long distance transmitted, maybe it become a bit weaker, a bit out of shape, a bit of zigzag noise. You can use op amps again, a certain circuit component to regenerate it and make it into a nice shape again. So all this zigzag noise, all this is gone. So then the nice thing is, digital signals can be regenerated. Even if they get weak or distorted due to noise or otherwise. You can say the noise is removed. Lah. Removed. I think these are two of the top pros. The other things you can talk about is signal can be encrypted. So I'll just I'll just very quick, quick, quickly list here. Go check out the mark scheme if you want to know more. Uh, can be encrypted, can be multiplexed. You can send a lot of information at the same time. A whole bunch of ones and zeros and ones and zeros. Just send, just send. Each packet and that's how a lot of the information that we get in our Wi-Fi and phone is transmitted. Anyway, go check those out. All you need is two to get a B2 mark. The first one for circuits, you must say, uh, don't say digital is cheaper and more reliable. Say the circuits for digital are more reliable and cheaper. The other one can be regenerated. This is a two top reasons why we use digital. So analog signal comes in, converts to digital, and then transmitted, and then convert back into analog signal. Classic uh, form is me talking to my microphone here, and then it is sent through digital ones and zeros, sent over to YouTube, and then YouTube sent over to your phone or computer right now. That's why I, you can hear my voice. Okay, and it's converted to an analog signal, which is, for example, I don't know, your, your speaker maybe, or your earphones, and the sound come out. That's the beauty of it. So, mm, look at this signal. You have a, a, a kind of curvy analog signal that we're going to process into digital form. So here, the sampling is given to us. The analog signal is sampled at time intervals of 0 0.1. First sample is 0. Some value of the sample is shown in table 4.1, so it's down here. Each digitized number contains 4 bits. Before we go to the table, notice this. Sample at time interval of 0 0.1. That's related to your sampling frequency. What does this mean, 0 0.1? It means at time 0, I will take a point here. Time 0 0.1, I will take another point here. Time 0 0.2, I take another point here. Take another reading. Lah. 0 0.3, I read. 0 0.4, I read. 0 0.5, I read again. Okay, so I will lose out a lot of this smaller wiggles, smaller mountain, I won't know they are there if I'm only sampling every 0 0.1 second. Sorry, millisecond. Now we go to the table. So they already tell us the sampling 0, 0.5.7, 6.2. Let's check and see. Uh. 0, 5.7, so I guess here is 5.7. Here is 6.2. The reading, uh, analog reading. And we need to complete the last three as well, right? Yep, we need to read the analog signals to fill inside the blank here. So, we need to read law. This one is 3.0. The next sampling is 4.8, I think. I'm trying to look very carefully on my computer screen. And the last one is all the way down there at 1.0. So let's write these three numbers down in our table. So, I think they asked you to complete the table. I got too excited, I already started completing it. So, 3.0. 4.8, 1.0. You just read from the graph as it is. Anyway, let's continue with this part. In the table 4.1, underline the least significant bit in the digital signal for 0 0.2 milliseconds. So, this one. Okay, so we're going to look at 
the digital signal, called in the binary form, least significant bit would be the right-hand side. If they want the most significant bit, they'll be the left-hand side. This is most significant bit. So it's the least significant bit, LSB. So you just, I mean, don't underline the left side. Lah, just underlining for you to see. Okay. Uh, that is, if you get correct, just one mark. All right. So this is just B1 if you do your LSB on the right-hand digit. Okay, complete the table. We are completing halfway. So all these, you just read from graph. Analog signal, read from graph. Now the digital signal, you have to convert that into binary form. Binary has only two digits. You get zero or you have one. How do you work this thing? First, you need to make sure they are rounded down to the nearest... What's the sampling? Ah, the nearest whole number. So we need to remember to round it down because binary, we cannot take decimal points. <laughs> so, so we're going to round this down. So this is three. That is already correct. So if you, if you know how to use a calculator to find binary, great. If you don't know how to use calculator, go check out Miss Lee's video on how to use binary, uh, how to convert binary with calculator. But let me show you the traditional way. So there's four bits. One, two, three, four. Inside these boxes, you can either put zero or one. Now each box represents a placing of 1, 2, 4, times 2 is what? 8. You keep going, lah. you keep time multiplying by 2. 8 times 2 16. 16 times 2 32, and so on and so forth. So if you want to get a value of 3.0, what do we need? What plus what equals to 0? 2 plus 1, right? So we need a 2 plus 1, which gives us 3, which means I will need 2 and a 1. The rest do I need? I don't need. So I put 0. Lo. 0, 0. So here will be 0, 0, 1, 1. That is the binary code for the number 3. Okay, so see, uh, these are what we call, the green color one is what we call placing. It's kind of like how in normal, if I say 928, I can break this down into, well, this placing is single digit. This placing is 10, 100. I can keep going, 1,000, 10,000, and so on and so forth. So this, I can break this down into 9 of 100, because 9 in pacing 100, plus 2 of a 10, plus 8 of 1. Hey, how to write? Uh? 8 of 1. There we go. 8 times 1. That is how I can break down this. So use the same system to think in terms of binary. Okay, let's do the rest. 4.8, mm, that's not good. We need to round that down first. So let's look at this one. First step, we need to round down. So this one will be rounded down. Down uh, for analog uh, to digital conversion, we round down to the nearest whole millivolt because we only can take whole numbers. So let's do that. What plus what equals to four? Uh, you look at the choices we have here in the four boxes. Where is four? Four is already here. So all we need is a one four. Do we need the rest? No, we do not need the rest. So put zeros in all the other ones. So this will be zero one zero zero. Next one, what to <clears throat> what binary do we what binary numbers do we need to get one? It's just one, I guess. One is right here. So <clears throat> we're just gonna put <clears throat> zero 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 one. My throat is dying. Ah, uh, never mind. So three marks here. One mark is where? Oh. <clears throat> If you go this line, all correct. This one is B1. Then if you have these two correct, just converting to binary, that's another mark. Now if you have this one by itself correct, that's B1. Because you need to round down. The, the, the special thing is round down. Okay, that's your table. It's more or less the same question like if they ask about this type. Okay, let's keep going. So a single bit is converted to output of 1 millivolt. Assume the conversion and transmission has no time delay, so the time, I mean, 5.7 at 0 0.1 sec millisecond is exactly the same. We need to redraw the variation of the output from the digital to analog converter. Okay, I am go you should draw the answer here, but I am going to draw it on this plot because we already have these values here. Okay, so we convert, so we're talking about conversion to 
ones and zeros, we send to the other side. Now we are converting back into analog. So all these ones and zeros are going to be sent through internet Wi-Fi. And now we convert back to analog. What will we get? Okay, let's do. Now the first thing you know is all will be steps. The first sampling here is going to be zero dot zero. So here is already zero all the way up to this point. You use a ruler, draw straight lines, okay. The next one is 5.7, but we had to round down. How you know 5.7? Well, 5.7, you round down to 5. This is basically 5.0. So we had to round down to the nearest whole integer. So this one here will be 5. Up to the next point and stop. Okay, so this is where the thing will be sampled. Now 6.2, next one, round down to 6. So over here. 3.0 is at 3.0. Oops, that's in the way. Let me move it a little bit. 3.0, there we go. And there'll be a flat line. The next sampling point is 4.8. We have to round down to 4. So that'll be here. And the last one, 1.0. Okay, so uh, now we draw the vertical lines for the steps. Now you can use the dotted line or straight line, doesn't matter. La. Use a ruler, okay. So the three marks comes from... Uh, if you firstly draw steps with the correct width of 0 0.1, that depends on your sampling frequency. Uh, this one is the first mark. Okay, that's B1. Then if you have the steps in the correct output voltages, which is 0, 5, 6, rounded down already, remember, 3 and then 4, then that will be the second mark for all your steps. Actually, two marks if you get all correct. Or if you have a few wrong, they'll minus a bit already. Last, so go check the mask game if you're not sure how to get these marks for this uh, analog to digital conversion. So you draw this graph, but on the last page. Where's the last page? Ah, here. Redraw that here. Okay. And that is all for this question. All right. So hopefully that was helpful in helping you understand better how signals are converted from analog to digital. And then from digital back to analog. You will lose some information depending on your sampling rate. Like you see this small mountain, gone. This small mountain, also gone. But it's okay. You kind of get the shape. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next question.